Hi everyone, this is Jean Spraker and welcome to my book vlog. I know I told you that I'd be taking you to Punjab today, but it seems I'm actually gonna take you on a little detour back to my beloved Bangalore once again. And that's because in the last week of 2017, I read two books that were both <clears throat> set in Bangalore and I absolutely loved them. Now, in this episode, I'm actually gonna focus on the one thing that guarantees a bestseller in India. That's right, food. I, I bet you thought I was gonna say something else, right? Like covers or whatever, but no, 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 food. Food, Indians love food. And unlike Americans, they actually really still have a very close cultural relationship with it. Food represents the diversity of Indian cultures and moves across those cultures. It's tied to hospitality, it's tied to community, and it's even actually tied to religion. Uh, the truth is that food can't actually guarantee a bestseller, but when you read many of India's best-selling novels, you will see that these writers consistently use food in their books. And not just as set pieces, um, like, oh, there's this food on the table, but actually as plot points and as part of the character development. So today I'm going to introduce you to two books uh, that both use food in very different ways. And the first up is actually uh, A Royal Affair by Preeti Venagopala. Um, so a little disclaimer on this one, um, the main character Jane is a Brit who falls in love with an Indian prince named Vijay. And although she actually doesn't know he's a prince when she meets him and, and then she finds out he's a prince when, well, actually look, I'm not actually going to tell you, um, you're just going to have to read the book to find out uh, for yourself. Um, but. Um, this character Jane, her name is actually kind of very similar to mine uh, because, well, in part, actually, I, I inspired uh, the character. Um, not that I fell in love with an Indian prince, no, 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 not that part, um, but because of my love of Indian food. It's actually one of Jane's primary characteristics. Um, when she's longing for India and longing for her prince, she satisfies that longing with a big heaping plate of biryani. And, and then there's the whole joke around the jalebis, but, but never mind, don't worry about that. Um, this book is great for an American audience because of the way Preeti has used uh, the foreign character. Uh, Jane helps make the Indian side of the story, I think, a little bit more accessible to a foreign audience, especially when, you know, a few things here and there are explained to her um, that wouldn't normally be explained to an Indian readership. I think that really helps. Um, but for the most part, you're really not gonna need um, that much explanation because this romance novel, you know, it's it, Royal Affair follows those conventions. And if you're a regular romance reader, you're just gonna fall right into the plot like you would for any other romance novel. Um, the really great thing about this book is that it is actually a fairly nuanced view of a foreign character and Preeti has really you know, saw, thought through the way Jane would react differently uh, to certain situations than how an Indian would react. Um, one of the not so great things about this book though is honestly the sex. N nothing about the writing of the sex though, no, no, that's fine. Um, that's not the problem at all. The, <laughs> It's just that I felt like at one point, you know, when the big moment comes between VJ and, and Jane, that, how can I put this? That, you know, they, they kind of get wrapped up in the moment, you know, and, and, and they forget to, um, you know, wrap it up. And um, when it comes to condom use in this context, I think that not only would VJ use protection because he wouldn't want little heirs running around, um, but also, uh, I think Jane would insist on it. Um, and I, I know condom use is kind of controversial in, in romance novels, a bit of a slippery topic. Um, and especially in the case of Indian audience who may actually frown upon its use a bit. Um, but for Jane, at least, and her character, I, I think she would actually insist on it, uh, even if Vijay resisted. Um, but, but that issue aside, I, I really did enjoy the book. It's a great light read, and I'm really deeply touched uh, by Preeti's decision to base her character on me. I'm really glad that you know my presence in, in her life uh, could help 
uh, close a culture gap for her. And she and, and uh, my other friends certainly do the same for me. And, and that actually brings me to uh, my next book, which is Gotcha Gochur, okay, by Vivek Schonbach. Uh, this book was on uh, most uh, best of 2017 lists, and when I asked my friends for a book set in Bangalore, uh, this was at the top of the pile. Um, this book was actually originally published in Kannada in uh, 2013 and translated into English uh, just this year. Uh, many Indians will actually tell you that the best literary work in India is actually not done in English, but done in uh, the other major Indian languages, and Shambhag's an example of that. Um, you know, more and more you're seeing more and more of this work actually translated into English, which was really great for people like me who can barely pronounce Gachar Gochar, and it helps us get a deeper uh, understanding of the Indian experience. Now, the first thing I actually love about this book is the cover. Um, this is actually the American edition of the book. And, you know, I, I really think uh, the Indian cover is different. And if I'm being honest, I actually like the Indian cover better, but I do understand why they went with this one for the American market. Um, the pages are just really thick and uh, the edge is really ragged and just deeply gorgeous and I, I just really love it. This is actually really honestly how you should manufacture a great book with a great cover. Um, and Gotcha Gocher is actually the story of an unnamed narrator and his family. Uh, the family represents the changing face of India's growing middle and upper classes. They start off as kind of like on the lower to middle rung of the social ladder and then one of the family members uh, starts a spice business and they suddenly find themselves as upper class and quite frankly they don't deal with it very well at all. Uh, that's actually the major tension in the book. Um, the great thing about this book for Americans is hey you know look guys it's short you know and I love short books so that that's the first thing. But the other thing is that you know this book really doesn't feel like it needs a lot of context built into it. I, I don't feel that the editor and translator are pandering to an American audience. I'd actually be kind of interested in in comparing the editions to see the differences. I mean I saw the American typographical conventions were used but I actually wonder other than the cover how much Americanization was, was really done. Um, this is a really great American edition, and because it's so short, I think it gives you a great snapshot into uh, life in India. Now, as for the food, uh, one of the critical scenes in this book involves food, and, and no, I'm not gonna actually talk about the specifics of that scene, um, but it gives you an understanding of the role that food plays in Indian culture, and there's actually quite a lot of interesting nuances around the behavior of the characters in this particular scene. Uh, I think it really gives you a sense for the Indian sense of hospitality, the tensions in the family, and what Indians value both culturally and gastronomically. My big gripe with this book is actually the ending. But if you wanna know why, you're just gonna have to read the book yourself and tell me what you think because I don't give away endings. Now, if you do want to leave comments, you know, and, and you're more than welcome to do that, but no spoilers, guys. Um, so anyway, that's my second recommendation. But there's one more thing I want to talk to you about uh, before I go, and that's that both these books were ordered on Amazon. Uh, Preeti's book, uh, A Royal Affair, was ordered on my Kindle, and Gatra Gocher was ordered online through Amazon Prime. And the reason for that is that it's not available in my local Barnes and Noble and Rittenhouse Square. Barnes and Noble, are you paying attention? <sighs> Look, I'm gonna be honest, I've been fairly frustrated with the level of availability of Indian writers in that bookstore. Uh, that's actually the largest Barnes and Noble in Philadelphia. And if we get beyond the Ministry of Utmost Happiness and Ashwin Sanghi's book with James Patterson, well, that's pretty much all we got. And there's no Narayan, there's no Tagore, and even in the classic sections, I mean, you know, I know it'll amaze you to learn, but there is no Chaitan Bhagat. And okay, maybe that's not so amazing, but, but maybe it's a function of who lives in Rittenhouse Square and what they wanna read. But I actually bet 
that those in Rittenhouse Square would really like to read this book, Barnes & Noble. You need to stock it. Give it a chance. See if we'll buy it. I bet you we will. You're missing some serious opportunities here to sell diverse books. But what do I know? I only represent the most powerful book buying demographic in America. So, yeah, anyway. That's all for today. <laughs> uh, you can find me at my usual places, my website, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And until next time, guys, cello, bye.